Okay, part two of the collab is here, and Shaltier has blessed us with her amazing presence. I, for one, really psyched about this hero. Uh, this is the Blood Rose character that LC never gave me, as far as I'm concerned. You know, she is an undead type, but her overall theme here is that she is a vampire, and boy, oh boy, is she an epic vampire. Uh, so this girl has lifesteal pretty much built into everything. Um, she doesn't come with proud force. You add that to her, but she has so much lifesteal, it's going to be very easy for her to keep her hit points topped off and to take advantage of any bonuses that you can get with full health. Uh, so she's going to be fairly straightforward and easy to build, and she's going to be powerful everywhere. This is a PvE amazing character. Um, you're just going to be able to thrash your way through story with this girl, and, you know, she's cool. She has one of, well, one of the more powerful mechanics in the game, just flat out doubling your hit count. So, uh, the last time we had a, you know, character that can double his hit count like that, it was Big Papa V um, from the Devil May Cry collab. Uh, the second time it came around. So, interestingly enough, V can only do that once per quest, period, right? It costs him all of his MP, he activates that ability, and then he can't even stack that ability with, like, his flinch-proofness. So, you know, it is, it is what it is, uh, and he is very powerful. I still use him. Uh, but Shaltier here... She can drop double hit count for her uh, S1, S2, and S3 as many times as you want because it's tied to her special. So that is a huge, huge freaking advantage, especially for big, long boss fights that drag on. Um, the fact that she can continuously drop her special and then double the hit count of her abilities is just effing amazing. And she has a pretty awesome kit. I really enjoy her kit. I think it's cool. Um, you have an S1 that gives you some travel. She bursts forward and attacks with her lance, her spear. She is an awesome holy spear user. Yeah, who would have thought that this girl is holy damage, light damage? I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> it's a light attribute vampire. Oh, it's Twilight in this mask. Um... <laughs> She's a sun vampire. <laughs> Their skin glows like glitter. Oh my goodness. Anyway, uh, her S2, in my personal opinion, is where it's at. I love it. Uh, Purifying Lance. It is just this big, nasty arrow that she throws. And uh, she hits everybody that's in the way of it. It does great damage. Great hit count, in my opinion. After she throws her special and you're doubling your hit counts. It's great powerful stuff um and then the s3 negative impact shield wide aerial light combo attack gives magic attack damage taken minus 50 percent buff to the unit so that is awesome 50 percent less magic damage um after you throw your s3 that's really good she's going to be taking substantially less magic damage as long as you keep using you know, the S3, and actually she has no problem keeping her her skills fed, uh, because she is a vampire, as soon as this girl um, kills any monster or anything, she recovers a ton of SCT, uh, you'll see it right now when I run her, I'm just kind of going over everything, right, uh, let's look at some of her amazing skills here, Oh, wait, that's right. We might as well look at her special since we just went through the S1, S2, and S3. Uh, her special is powerful light combo attack to one unit. And then it gives the unit the, I can't pronounce it, buff, that double skill hit count when equipped with only one weapon. Once per quest. Uh, so, oh, I didn't notice that it was once per quest. Okay, so they... Uh, 
They did not let her do this all that she wants. I see. I see. Okay, I was about to say, because that, that is OP broken AF. She's still very strong. I mean, she's going to get to use that ability about as often as um, V, right? Uh, it's going to be once per quest. He can just auto cast his, but he's sacrificing all of his MP to do it. She throws it with her, obviously, the first special of hers that you throw. Um, you're going to be able to do that. Let's see. That's interesting because then after she throws her special the first time, you could hold on to your second special and build her to get a bunch of damage and stat buffs off of having her special charged up. Because if it's not doubling your hit count, well, you know, I'll probably throw it when I need to to actually double her hit count. And then after that, I would just hold on to a full special. Because really, the S1, S2, S3, that's where you're really going to be doing a shit ton of damage. Um, yeah, she's a monster, even without doubling her hit count. It's crazy. And then there's also all of the healing that she's constantly getting along the way. You know, even without Proud Force. So, let's take a look at some of the interesting stuff they've given her. Her Transcend Abilities, of course, are like off the chain. They gave her Armor Mastery, which has given her Defense 50%, Damage Taken minus 10%. That is awesome. Uh, I don't have all of her Transcends yet, so I still have a few to go. But we have Summon Household. When Skill Attacking, Chance to Deal extra attack so that's cool that increases her hit count even more blood frenzy when using a skill boost strength and cut mind uh, max strength plus 90 percent which is actually really nice and mind minus 30 yeah i'm all for that uh, especially you know even if her mind is low remember she can throw that s3 and half the magic damage that's coming at her so that's cool uh, we have Pipette Lance, when only weapon equipped is one spear, and skill attacking, chance to absorb 1% of the damage's hit points. Uh, the recovery cap per hit is 999. So, pretty much with every hit, you're going to be healing 1,000. <laughs> so, that's pretty good just off of that. This is without Proud Force, without... Uh, what What is the ability that lets you steal health with your basic attack uh, it's its own thing so we have guardians duty critical damage taken minus 20 percent and anti-type damage taken minus 20 percent um, there is some undead type killers out there so um, this kind of softens that blow a little bit she has time reverse when close to death very greatly restore hit points uh, three times per wave so she brings three heals to every single fight before you kill her. She's she's not bad on hit points. She's fairly tanky for what she's putting out. She's got giant killing three. Sharp eyes is already included in the kit. A quick trigger so she has something to start with. Uh, usually no matter where I'm at, the quick trigger will charge her whole kit. Because whatever she's starting with, as soon as you throw that ability, she's going to kill something and she's going to charge a bunch of her abilities up off of it. We'll see when, when I run her. We have special boost. What is that? Five. Uh, armor hit point plus. Armor boost. Remember, she does wear that gnarly red armor. And then we get into, like, the spear giga boost. Uh, Two-handed spear boost. I'm a big fan of some of the spears in this game. Uh... My goodness, I, I forget exactly which collab it was, but Karunai Spear Style is really cool. It's 15% more damage with a spear, and you have a chance to just ignore enemies guarding. So, I like stuff like that. Spears are pretty cool. And then she just has a bunch of, like, the light attack uh, rise and light mega drive. All that good stuff that's just going to increase her light damage. Silver lining at max hit points, which is going to be like all the time. Skill damage plus 20%. Uh, silver lining is going to be really easy for her to proc because 
Well, every damage counter she throws out there, she's healing like at least a thousand hit points off of it. And of course, a bunch of stuff like Pride at max hit points, Strength plus 20%. She's going to be at max hit points a lot, right? Uh, she has Anti-Type Breakthrough, 3. That's awesome. Anti-Type Boost, very awesome. Uh, and let's see, where was it? Besides the Anti-Type, I could have sworn... Oh yeah, we skipped some stuff. Evil Absorption's awesome. When taking physical magic damage, chance to recover 50% of the damage as hit points. She has a lot of different ways to get hit points back. Blood Force is another one. Regular attacks have a chance to absorb 20% of damage dealt as hit points. Uh, and for her, that is just great. Um, she had some sort of... That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for her Slayer damage. And actually, that might be in one of her talents her traits i'm sorry um yeah right here the bloody valkyrie give physical attacks and special and anti undead god sorcerer type effects so she's got you know undead god and sorcerer type slayer built in and she has all those slayer bonuses boost so you get 50 percent more damage from this and you know those all stack up the breakthrough and everything um, so that applies to undead, god, and sorcerer type. Now, you can very easily just add another slayer to her, and all those bonuses to damage will apply to that as well, because she has, like, the slayer's core kit. So you can add whatever slayer you want, and she's just going to get even more damage out of it. So that is very cool. And right off rip, you know, she has three Slayers built in. She's absolutely going to kill a Sorcerer. If she can throw that S2 Spear of hers, she will just annihilate a Sorcerer in the back somewhere. Um, so, very cool, right? Let's see, what's the rest of it? When equipped with only one weapon, light damage 40%, damage cap another 70,000. Physical attack damage taken minus 30%. When skill attacking can't be interrupted by most attacks. So that's also very nice. They gave her some flinch proof in there. And it's when skill attacking. So it's really hard to um, you know, mess her up when she's throwing one of her skills. Uh, they're fairly quick cast. And once they start going, there's pretty much no stopping them. So she's got that going for her. Uh, her other trait is, I hope you will entertain me well. Boost light damage. Uh, and damage cap based on number of hit point recoveries from the pipelet lance skill effect. At 100 recoveries, you're getting damage plus 80%, damage cap 40,000 more. It resets each wave. When defeating an enemy, restore SCT 5 seconds. If the enemy is divine type, it also restores one SCT talk stock for one skill. So... She's got a, a lot of ways in here to feed her kit, um, especially depending on which enemies that you're fighting. And she even scales crazy damage up um, based off of how much you use that ability to heal, um, recovers from Pipelet Lance. So Pipelet Lance is letting her heal off of the damage that, that she does up to 999 hit points at a time. So... Not only are you healing for a thousand hit points at a time every time you're doing damage, but as you're healing hit points, your damage is going up, up to like 80% or something stupid and 40,000 more to damage caps. So she really is quite the vampire. She's going to keep getting stronger and stronger. And it's not like she comes with weak stats and low hit points. This girl's not even a glass cannon. She is rocking like a full plate of armor. So, um, we have a little bit of dark weakness, 10%. Um, she's really strong to light, 35% resistance, and she is strong to fire. That might just be some of the gear that I have on her. Uh, but all in all, she looks really good. She's going to absolutely crush Spirited Assault. I just, this girl is just going to crush everything. Let's see how quickly we can charge our kit. So no charismas, no abilities, nothing to throw. Ooh, and we started with one of my favorites. Uh, the S2, I love the S2. I'll just throw it right here. Boom! I love that. 
So the knight died, and I have an S1 to throw. Just that simple. This is on God mode. <laughs> so, um, she do be having some heavy hands. The damage is getting through. I like to just aim for the one in the back. S2. Bam. S2. That's got some great crowd control. It's pushing everybody back. It went through most of the enemies. It skipped this one toad. But I can just finish him with an S1. She does do her little transformation. The sprite work is great to see her go from that armor to her little vampire dress. Very dope. Um, she also has a transcend ability that's going to charge up her special. So you can actually activate it and get her double hit count. Uh, I just don't have that transcend ability yet. So we haven't used her S3. The S3 is insane. Hold on. We'll target the TR Rising. We'll show off her special. That is a cool looking special. Here's where she makes a copy of herself. Oh, this explains why she has double the hit count now. Oh, snap. And we can actually see the buff on her. Ein Hajar, whatever the hell it's called, double skill hit count. We're, we're at 5316 strength, not too bad. It's not like she's scraping, you know, uh, 9, 10,000 strength. Uh, the other thing is too though, remember she gets an 80% bonus to her strength when actually resolving damage to you. So, you know, with her being at like 5,000 strength, she's really hitting closer to like 10,000 strength when that activates, but it'll never reflect in the stat, I don't think. But I think that explains why, you know, she does hit so hard, even with only like a 5,000 attack, because it is kind of stupid. And now we'll just throw an S3. And everybody just gets hit with that all over the place. The TR Rising survived. The mage survive. Here's our basic attack. Here's a S2. I love that S2. And when she has a bunch of those charged up, she can just keep throwing them all the way across the screen. It's pretty cool. I like the way her kit works, you know. Uh, and the S3 is absolutely ridiculous. It just nukes everything around her. You know what? Might as well just go destroy the ogre real quick too, just so I can show you how stupid, stupidly easy this is. Now, I went to the lab because uh, Heart of the Temple is much easier for a light attribute hero. Um, I usually run dark attribute heroes through here because the enemies have like 95% resistance to dark. So... Um, <laughs> Light attribute is the strongest attribute in here. But either way, look at this. Okay, with just an S1, I can get in there. I was kind of hoping to kill one bird. That's all I need to do. S1, one bird died. I got a bunch of S2s and S1s now. And the ogre's almost dead. I've thrown two S1s. Damn these birds. S2 all the way through all of them. <laughs> now, if this fight starts with like an S2 or an S3, it's just, it's an instant wipe because they can't survive the S2. It kills some of the birds and then it charges the rest of her kit and she can finish everybody off. There we go. Do that again real quick. I have a weak arc on her as well. You know, this is just something to charge her special up fairly quickly with but I haven't even been needing to use that and she's running around with hindered stats as a result Let's see what do we charge oh the S1 again we did get an S2 though one of those birds must have died yeah so an S1 and then an S2 cleared this whole map right? <laughs> we're not throwing any debuffs we're not throwing charismas, animas nothing she doesn't have to do a damn thing so, very easy to use, very powerful, very Blood Rose that we never got. 
So I'm taking it as a win. I think most people are going to want this hero from this collab. Uh, then the mage, uh, and then the super guild versus guild tank that most people aren't going to really care about all that too much. So leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and I will see you on the flip side. Oh, shout out to everybody that bitched to Adis about them taking that 30,000 lapis out of the game. I've heard through the grapevine that apparently they're going to address that, and they're going to find some way to put that 30,000 lapis back into the game. So I will keep an eye on that situation. I will definitely uh, be calling some BS like that out because we love this game. We need to support the new player population and make sure they don't get scalped <laughs> like half the Lapis that they're owed from you know beating Chapter 1 or Chapter 2 or whatever it is. Lapis is hard enough to grind. It's a precious resource. And uh, new players should have all the chances that us veterans have had to get some lapis along the way and save it so um good on them for actually listening to the community because i don't think one person was happy about them gutting thirty thousand lapis out of this game from new players so definitely still keeping an eye on that and they're supposed to recycle that back into the game somehow we will see i'll keep you posted like and sub and share if you can to support my work and i will see you on the next one have an awesome day everybody